Well, if you've owned a Blues Junior, a little Pro Junior, or any of those uh, little Fender amps with the EL84s that we all like to fool with so much, you are probably familiar with what you're looking at. A stripped out and broken plastic input. What you might not be familiar with is how to fix it. And how to fix it once and for all by replacing this plastic jack with an all-metal switchcraft jack like you'd find on real amplifiers. So that's what we're going to do today is dig into replacing this with the proper input jack to solve this problem forever and show you how to do it. So the first step get that chassis out of the cabinet. It's pretty simple. Second step, very important step. Check the plus side of these capacitors and make sure they're not holding any voltage. I think you'll see on the meter face these are at 42 millivolts. So there's no electricity stored in these caps which assures us of not getting electrocuted. Next step is going to be to remove all the knobs and remove the screws on the circuit board so that we can get the board leaned out and get the old input desoldered from the board. In order to give yourself enough clearance to slide the board back and get all the pots to clear the front of the chassis you'll have to unbolt the speaker board from right here and unplug the blue and the brown wire from the output transformer that are connected to the board. Alright so before we take the old input out which still functions thankfully I've got my uh, digital voltmeter hooked up so that I get a continuity no sound when I touch the ground side of the plug so that I know when I plug this in I'm gonna find the grounds on the circuit board so and these are the four points that mount the plastic input jack And of the four, it's these two right here that are the ground side of the jack. Interesting to note, by the way, that the chassis is also ground. Now I'm going to change the other side of my uh, continuity to the tip. Not the shank, the tip. Plug it back in and it should be the other two which it is so these two are hot these two are ground so now we know how to hook up our switchcraft jack when we put it in now here's our input jack removed from the board and remember when it was on the board this pin and that pin beeped when we touched ground. When the cable was plugged in the shank of the cable showed continuity to these pins and the hot pins appeared to be here and here. Now we've removed it from the circuit and we have our meter hooked up to the tip of a cable which is plugged into this jack and on the tip nothing, nothing, nothing there's the tip now switching to the ground side of the input cable nothing 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 and there's ground so this is the the usable ground portion this is the usable or positive portion and this 
<clears throat> is the switching part of this jack so that when there's nothing plugged in ground is connected from here to there which shorts this out and off you go so with our switchcraft we need to be mindful that the ground goes to here the hot goes to here and the switching part of the switchcraft jack goes here and if we transfer that to the board we've got the main ground still the switching portions and the hot so we're going to put our jumper wires in those positions so here's the long story short I've got the tip of the switchcraft running to the point we declared was hot when we did our jack test I have the typical wiring of a switchcraft is the ground side comes in on this side and jumpers over to the switching portion of the jack and then the same is true on the board it comes into our common point and jumpers over to the switching part you can see that I've got those two connected and I have nothing on what was uh, the switching part of the hot before because we don't need it and I'll show you that test now so there we are finished up uh, getting the jack installed and as you can see we've used the nearest point up there which on the old jack was mark number one that is our ground you can see below that it jumpers over to the shorting switch of the switchcraft and then we used what was on the old jack as number two which comes to the hot and everything's good it's just a reminder there is the old jack that was one and that was two and that's what we used we didn't have to use the other two at all because the switching is done on this jack by jumpering it over from ground to the shorting jack also a question that comes up often about whether or not the jack has to be isolated from the chassis well in this instance no because everything was shorted to the chassis already so it doesn't need to be isolated um, if you have a green board it may be different if you had a, a, a blues junior three or four it may be different but on this american made cream board chassis ground is okay to the jack there's no problem so you don't have to isolate it well there you go that's what you want to see when you're looking at a blues junior is a metal switchcraft input. Working like it should. Hope the video helped y'all.